Hi, my name is Laura Darren King and today we're going to do some rice paper transfers. A little background on me, I've been doing clay for quite a while um, and before the last three years or so I did mostly sculptural stuff and uh, took a long break because I did not have access to facilities at all. So. Um, in the last couple years, I've had space in my garage and I found a bunch of stuff on Craigslist and cobbled together a pretty affordable studio. Um, but I love clay. I love making things out of all sorts of materials. But what's awesome about clay is I love that it can be like so many different things. And I also like the functional and three-dimensional aspect, as well as being able to incorporate drawings, which is where the rice paper transfers come in. Um, now I, in the past, and I still do, would draw a lot on clay. Um, this is something, just an example, you know, under glaze, pencil, um, brush, um, and I would do that a lot, but uh, I really love just sort of spacing out, sitting on the couch, drawing pictures, having ideas, and not necessarily having it be more casual like that, um, and then have the ability to come back later and combine things and put things together, or to make multiple of the same image um it's pretty pretty awesome so these are sort of you know different rice paper transfers that i have just laying around um there's this one this one which we'll talk about, but the color here is put on too thick. So when I transfer it, these lines are not gonna come through, but we will discuss that. Um, yeah, so I have a bunch of different rice paper transfers. This guy um, is one that I burned a screen for, so I drew a picture and then I burned a screen printing screen for, and was able to print a bunch. So I was able to make a bunch of rice paper transfers that are pretty much exactly alike. I mean, my mugs all different are different. This one is a transfer that I drew on rice paper. And one thing to remember, which I'll try to remind you, which hopefully I will, but, um, Whatever image you put on the rice paper, so an example of rice paper, um, keep in mind that if you're doing lettering or if you want something to be oriented a certain way, it's going to be the mirrored opposite. So you want to have your words, your letters backwards if you want it to print the correct way. So something to keep in mind. Um, here's another one that I did a lot of, um, duplicates of, so I could have this one is just, I just drew, painted on some rice paper, a bunch of Hawaiian flowers. Um, and this is not, this is just one off, you know. Um, so a good reference to look up where I learned a lot of this stuff from ceramicsartnetwork.org and look up how to make magic rice paper transfers by Kate Mizette. So she has a recipe in there of the type of ink, underglaze ink you can make that it, it just sets up well. It goes through a screen well if you're going to do screen printing, but it's also awesome to use with one of these. Um, you can paint with a brush, um, and it's great. It dries. It doesn't flake off. Um, 
and then you know you can make it in whatever color but um, and she recommends Japanese rice paper called I'm just gonna show you I think it's shujigami um, I find that the one I found of that particular type of rice paper which is this it's a little wrinkly um, I this is the last bit as you can see I've been drawing on it but um she's she prefers the thick the thick rice paper um I do not I don't prefer the thick rice paper um I tend to like this thinner stuff that this and I apologize I don't know the name for it but um you know even though it's thin it still has a pretty strong feel to it like it's not going to break apart easily it's not like tissue paper and it's got this kind of glossy side and then it's got a rougher side um which is I think is important um that glossy side really can you can burnish on the transfer um well um, I love that it's transparent because what's awesome is, and I apologize for how much I will apologize, and also how many times I will say awesome, um, but for example, I mean, you can go into your sketchbook or, you know, if you find something that you like that you want to mimic or trace. You know, you can take your rice paper and trace. I know you can see a little unicorn, a little bit. Um, and it's handy. If you end up using that thicker um, paper, which is harder to see through. You can see through it a little bit, but it is pretty dense. Carbon paper is pretty awesome um, for... being able to trace stuff or to transfer stuff onto that paper. Um, which actually, if you do do like a worded text and you wanna just flip it, um, tracing or using the carbon paper is an awesome way to do that. Cause then you get exactly how you want it to look when it's flipped right side but you can have it reversed on the rice paper so that it will come out the right way. Before we get started, uh, you want some Karo syrup. You need a tablespoon of that. And then you want two teaspoons of your favorite mason stain. Mix that together and then add a teaspoon of your underglaze color, low clay content. So. Duncan Easy Stroke was a good one. I don't know if that's going to be around much longer, but um, so something similar to that. And then you're going to take uh, this gum solution and you're going to put in a tablespoon of that. And then you mix it all together and then you've got, you know, your colors. Okay, so now we're gonna make rice paper transfers. So the thing about your rice paper is it's gonna have hopefully a rough and a smooth side. So you're gonna draw on the rough side. And there's lots of ways to go about this. Um, I like using these pins. Uh, we can just Draw a little flower here. Ah, I don't need to finish this, but you would draw whatever you want and then you would let it dry. Um, different things have different effects. so. Using the pin, you're gonna get kind of a thicker pin-like line. You know, you can get more of a cool, um, flowy tapered line with a brush. 
which is nice. Um, you could, I mean, I love black, so I use, and I love black outlines and tattoo art and all that stuff, so I tend to use a lot of black outline-y stuff, but you don't have to. You can, um, you want to make sure your brushes aren't too wet, by the way, just have a towel or something around, but um, you could do all color. Um, so if you want to add color to your black outline, let's say you're doing a line drawing and the, and, and it doesn't have to be a black, but like a line drawing and you want to add color to it. Um, here's a little unicorn that I did. Um, and it's all dry. So you can just come back in again. You don't want your brush to be too wet. Um, and you don't want to put too much color on either just because if you, that's a little thin, but, um, if you glop it over too much over the, um, black outline, you can either blur it or like this guy I talked about earlier, the black's not going to transfer because there's just too much green over the top. And so I'm going to get some of the black, but I'll probably have to go back in and um, redo the black lines later for that one if I use it, <clears throat> which I'm going to show you what happens when you put too much color on, just a little cautionary tale. Um, also, great thing about this uh, rice paper, the thinner one, is you can, you know, trace your drawings. You can do multiples this way and you can just go right over the top of your drawing. And uh, running out of ink, but you get the idea. You can take more time with it. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm running out of ink here. All right. So one more thing that I talked about was wanting to do text and just making sure or whatever your image is, but if you want it to be a particular way, um, then you should... Actually, I'm just gonna do all at once, but this is carbon paper. So I just have a carbon paper facing up. Um, obviously, if you're gonna spend some time on your text, just draw, draw on this separately and then trace over it. I'm doing something very simple um, and Okay, awesome. So now I have it backwards on the other side. And then I can just boop and either, you know, trace it with pencil first or go right in with my pen or my brush or whatever I want to do. Oops. And it's going to be When I actually put it on the piece, it will be awesome. Yeah, but I forget this all the time. Um, and so it's just a good thing to remember. You always want, if you're doing text, if you're doing a portrait even, you know, people look different when it's reversed. We all know that when we look at the ourselves in the mirror and then we see ourselves on camera and we're like, wow, I look totally different. 
because we're not symmetrical and all that. So <clears throat> just keep that in mind. Um, now I'm going to show you how to put a little transfer on. This little mug, I mean, I would probably use a nicer mug than this normally, but this is what I have available. It's a little bit wet, um, but honestly, you want you want wetter than than dry. Dry is no bueno for the for the transfers. Too wet is not great either. Um, but um, yeah, this is a good. It's it, it's it's a little wetter, but it's not too wet. So um, let's see, my unicorn dry. I, yeah, and I, I probably normally, I use more light colored clay, and because this is wet, like, um, it's a little bit darker, it's, you can still get really bright colors and stuff with this, um, you know, I would probably pile up a little bit more color. First, I'll show you what happens with, well, no, I'll show you, um, let's see, let's do one of these guys. I'm going to cut this out. They're just little berry and leaf kind of shapes. And I like to use, so I just stick it down. Um, and this is like one of my favorite tools. It's a Martha Stewart bone folder. Um, but I love it for a lot of stuff. I, it really comes in handy. Um, maybe she'll sponsor this video. What do you think? Not really. She won't. So anyway, yeah, to smooth it on, um, you know, you can rip the paper. That's annoying. You don't want to do that. So if you notice, I'm using the flat side. You can use other objects. You could use um, like a rubber smoother, um, a rock. This just, you know, you can use a wooden tool. Um, this just happens to be a favorite. You want something smooth. Um, and now you can see kind of why having the smooth side up for the paper is important too. So then you just come from a corner and you peel it off and then you've got, you know, your design. Um, I'll show you for this fern or this thing here. I'll kind of show you why when you pile up too much color, it doesn't work out very well. Also, when you're putting down on a curved surface, and your image is curved, you can always cut in little slits to kind of make it conform easier, or it's just all about how you're smoothing it out. And sometimes it will fold or whatever, and you can make it work in your advantage, but. So yeah, so. I kind of start at one end. You know, you wanna try to avoid wrinkles if you can. Sometimes they happen, I mean, Honestly, I think imperfection is interesting, um, and I don't like things too perfect, so, you know, that's what adds interest to handmade things, in my opinion. I'm not trying to look like my things were made by a machine. Alright, so, smoothing out. And you just want to make sure you kind of get all over the place. Now, I put too much color on here, so it did, I guess it did. Maybe it worked better than I thought it would. Sometimes it doesn't. But if you notice, like I wasn't getting the whole image, so I'm going back over it again. And also, this, once it starts to rip, that can be a pain when you're pulling it off. Okay, so I did get some of the black, but you can see how sometimes piling up too much color. Sometimes that has to do with how dry your 
your pieces too. If it's too dry um, or too wet, too wet can smear it, too dry, you know you're not gonna get the whole image transferred on there. Um, yeah, so you can see like right here, I lost a little bit of the black detail. You know, here a little bit came up. So, you know, sometimes you have to go back in and, and uh, touch stuff up. But you can lay out your whole design. I mean, a little bit of touch up here and there, to me, is not the end of the world. Um, we will do one more. Let's do our little unicorn friend. So I would probably cut this out a little bit more um, normally, but for the sake of this video, I am not going to. Um, so anyway, and I didn't put a whole lot of red on there, so we might not get a lot of transfer, but um, you'll get the idea. You're going to experiment a lot. You're going to come up with your own ways of doing this that are different than mine probably just like you know i read that article and then i came up with my own techniques you know so um and yours might be way better than mine um so i noticed i'm gonna have a problem so i just come in and i'll like i'll cut so it will conform to the shape a little bit better So you see how it's wrinkling up a little bit? I mean, sometimes that just happens. Um, you just try to smooth that out as best you can. Sometimes it works out in your favor, like the lines will match up with the fold and it, you know, it turns out okay. But you just wanna make sure you get all the details you're trying to capture, so you just go over all your lines. Like, I don't have any white in there, so this unicorn's gonna be brown for now, unless I decide to fill it in. Um, and I can't, yeah, so I guess the red did transfer. But yeah, if you see a little dot, like, you go back and, and this got a little bit Yeah, so this guy didn't transfer super well. Um, but, I mean, even with that, you have an outline that you can easily touch up. So, um, I'll show you one of my screen printed ones uh, because they have a lot more even pigment distribution. Okay, so I'm gonna use this guy. This one was screen printed. Um, just to show you kind of the difference in line quality and stuff. When you use the screen printed, it's like the distribution of your underglaze is a lot more even, um, which is, is what it is. It's, it's just depends on your preference. So, why, it's going to be kind of a weird mug because it's got some random stuff on it, but I like random. Um, I mean, it's just probably just going to stay with me, this one, anyway. Yeah, so you just want to really, you're you're being gentle but thorough, um, and just sort of rubbing everywhere. I mean, I'm assuming I've never used a uh, commercial 
style transfer before, so but I would assume it's similar the way you um, do it. You can tell me, honestly. Um, but, yeah, you just want to make sure you get all your details rubbed on. Yep, so then you just pull it off. And this is always satisfying. It's just to see your image all done. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty cool. One thing to like, you don't wanna handle, see I'm like smearing this because it's wet. You wanna kinda let the sides dry. Um, there you go. So here's just, you know, some more things that you can do with the rice paper transfers. I have a pottery business and um, it's called Dee Dee and Shark. It's named after my son's uh, favorite stuffed animals. Dee Dee's a big stuffed bear and Shark's a shark. Anyway, you can find me on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook, Dee Dee and Shark, and then DeeDeeandShark.com. If you ever have questions, feel free to send me a message and I'll, I'll get, get with you. Well, I hope you all found this helpful and that you'll try making rice paper transfers. Um, there's just so many cool things you can do with it. All right. Take care.